guys you're welcome to my channel so in the last video i talked about something controversial i answered the question about if families can survive on minimum wage jobs and i did mention that personally in my opinion i think they can and i also talked about how the monthly budget for my family the size of myself and my husband is at 3000 canadian monthly for our basic necessities okay and i got a lot of reactions so i thought to do another video today showing you how i prepare my monthly budget in fact you are preparing the monthly budget with me for the month of october now while i'm running you through our monthly budget i'm also going to be telling you areas and places where we save cost and you will also be able to save cost okay so i'm going to do that in the next few minutes but just before i do i'd like to thank all my 400 subscribers you guys are the best thank you so much for supporting this four month old channel and here we are at 400 subscribers headed for 500 i cannot wait you guys please hit the subscribe button if i may say so myself i think i talk about really profound deep conversations that i don't think you get to hear everywhere else and i think that these are conversations that can support you and help you thrive today we're really going to be looking at cost saving methods that i use in my family and our budgeting method and i'm going to make a lot of recommendation along the way so guys let us get right into it okay let's get right into it so this is a family monthly budget and i i downloaded this template directly from excel you can get countless budget templates from wherever you want on the internet so if this is not your preference please make sure to just google and you'll find so many other kinds of templates that you can actually work with now i'm going to be preparing the budget for the month of october let's start with the fixed cost our rent is fixed every month and this comes to 1375 like i said guys 1375 is what we pay for a two bedroom apartment downtown calgary okay and i did say in my last video that you should try to find the most affordable rent that you can get okay and that mostly comes with older model buildings a phone bill every month comes to 118 dollars um, for my husband and i um, I did mention that when you come into Canada, you'd always pay for mobile every month. So the mobile bill um, for you to have mobile services is 118 for us both. Now, electricity in the apartment we stay is fixed at 75 Canadian. So you have 75 Canadian for us, electricity. And we do not pay for gas because it's already in the rent. We do not pay for water. It's already part of the rent. The next thing I think we pay for, that I know we pay for in this house would be internet, okay? It was, I had to rename some of those things to the way I wanted it. Now, our internet bill every month is 55 Canadian. Um, from We have a Telos internet in the home and you can get from other network providers. But the most important thing is at the point where you're coming into Canada, make sure you negotiate for very good rates. You can get as high as 80, you can get as high as 100 sometimes, but just negotiate for good rates and keep letting them know. I mean, you immigrant, I, I believe I should be entitled to some discounts, okay? And then you have a good rate. For parking, we pay $50 for parking in the apartment every month. And all of these are definitely fixed costs, okay? All right, guys, so for transportation, usually you're either going to pay for transit, which would then constitute the bus or the taxi fare, but or you're also going to pay off a car or you finance a car at the point where you're purchasing a car. So we're financing a car and every month we pay 414 Canadian for the car. That would be the cost of um, paying off the financing and then we pay insurance of 267 guys this insurance thing eh? you need to make sure that you are negotiating and negotiating for the best price you also need to make sure that you try to get your insurance with a class 5 license 
and if you need a class 5 license it's so not easy one of the things i never liked doing in canada was driving okay but i got help and you know i got trained on how to navigate the road here because it's so different from where you're coming from trust me you guys can reach out to me i have a solid plug for um the driving okay he's gonna brush you up and you do your driving test and pass it and get your class five and then get a good rate for your insurance all right because in our first year we're actually paying way more than this for insurance and all of that but anyways that's in the past now right now we pay 267 now for phil um most of the time we get to work from home i mean i work like three times in a week from home hobby works two times in a week from home so it's only when it's weekend and we have a lot of run around that's when we mostly use the car well when he's also going to work so we we project 150 canadian for fuel sometimes we end up doing 100 but let's just leave it at 150 because we really need to go to work these days all right so these constitute transport now you, you guys stay with me again you cannot exactly save cost here if you already have a fixed amount you are paying however you need to make sure that the amount you are paying is the best amount you can get you need to make sure that you're not paying too much for the vehicle just because you were given a higher interest rate and all of that you also need to make sure that you're working with a very affordable insurance company and you are getting very good bargain the moment you have this locked then you do not exactly need to save costs here here goes <laughs> another chunk of where you have your costs groceries <laughs> now as much as possible i try to cook everything from home as much as possible and i do that i actually i actually achieve it such that in a month there are months when i don't eat out at all like we don't at all there are other months where we eat out just once or twice maybe you know we go biking along the path i'm like okay i just like to get this but it's really rare okay so we rarely dine out however every month we try to keep um money aside and like i said it's not basic every month we keep money aside for flex so we're either eating out like we're either going on dinner dinner dates or we're going to see a movie or we have some activity or sports that we're engaging in i think all of that can come into entertainment okay but as far as surviving daily is concerned try as much as possible to cook at home it's a big cost saving i'm gonna put zero here just because it's really not a consideration on a monthly basis as for the groceries we work with 400 canadian most of the time sometimes we end up even doing 350 um i'm just going to try to see okay we do not have pets right now so you see that if you had pets you're going to be doing added cost so if you even no matter how much you like pets i mean i had a beautiful pet back in nigeria a beautiful dog I, I i don't want to have a dog yet just because i do not want my costs to i do not want it to drive my cost okay now personal care you see all of these things obviously i mean i have like skincare products i always get i have clothing i get i have all of these things it do, it's not a reoccurring cost it's not a compulsory really monthly cost it doesn't have to reflect in our monthly budget because i can always find a way around it for myself i'm talking about the family budget so i try not to infuse that into this at all okay for legal um i don't think anybody should have you know any reasons to really have legal cost especially in the first one year in canada which is my focus um for gifts and donations obviously um we go to church we give offerings you know we do all some sort of giving in church there are other people around you and in your family that you also give but you also have to make sure that this is proportionate and then yes you, you also have to make sure that it's not part of your monthly budget like those are the extras because if you're coming into canada and you're trying to thrive on a minimum wage job with your family then all of these things that i'm skipping shouldn't be your focus your focus should be on the basics so i am focused on the basics today okay 
savings and investment now what i'm going to say about the savings account is this no matter how no matter how much you earn in canada no matter how much you earn no matter how little you think you earn it is so vital that you are focused on your savings okay at least need to save for a rainy day you will know that you have saved very well for a rainy day when you have six months worth of your expense in savings for us for example that our total expenses in a month is three thousand we need to make sure that we have um three thousand times six that's what eighteen thousand we need to have that as emergency fund set aside right that is outside of other investment accounts that you might have or anything you need to make sure that you have your emergency fund my friend mimi was around over the weekend and the cost for having children in canada i mean she was one of the people who gave me perspective after she saw the last video she's like ella for people who have children it is different you're going to pay for child care you're going to pay for was it child care now? You're going to pay for daycare and all of that. You have to, children are expensive in terms of like what they eat, right? So, aside this grocery, if I if you have like children, one, two of them, you're probably adding like a thousand five hundred more to your groceries or like to your total expense just to accommodate the needs of the children, right? So in that case, you might not have a lot to save. It's important that you're keeping at least something, a fraction of your earning monthly so that you are working towards building emergency funds, okay? Now, if you go to taxes, well, the taxes go, except you have the business, the taxes pretty much go off at the point where you have your, at the point where you have your earnings, by the time you're getting your earnings, it's taxed automatically, so. You don't have to worry about that. Um, as for your loans, well, I see credit card loan here. And I see that too many people actually run into credit card debt. Remember that the rule of thumb for the use of a credit card is when you use a credit card, do not spend money you do not have in your checking for your credit card. And make sure that you are paying off the total amount of your credit card month on month do not pay the minimum pay it off so for example i have a i have grocery budget of 400 canadian i can either pay with my checking card my debit card or i can pay with my credit card i have the money in my checking account but i would rather pay with my credit card just so that i'm building my credit score right so even so i don't that's why i don't want to even put this here as debt because you're usually supposed to have money that you're spending on your credit card already in your debit right so to speak so that's why i don't want to put this here i'm only putting your budget i'm not putting your debt because if you're new in canada today i assume that if you want to spend 400 canadian buying groceries you want to pay for insurance 267 you are paying it with your credit card but you have the money in your debit card you have the money in your checking account so in, in, in that sense, it's no longer a debt because even if you pay it with your credit card, the money is right there in your, in your, in your checking account to make up for this. Again, this is not the reality of so many people in Canada, especially people who have been here for so long. Some persons have, you know, really used their credit card and accrued a lot of debt. People have as high as 10,000 Canadian in debt for their credit cards and again for it's sort of like an advantage for new immigrants because you have the opportunity to make sure you don't get there make sure you don't get there and always pay off your credit card and only buy things that you can afford with the card and then just use the card for the sake of building credit score okay so i'm not, I'm not gonna put anything here is zero and if you have if i have people who have credit card who are credit card debts listening to me my recommendation to you would be please try to um, set aside something every month towards paying down your credit card no matter how minimum you think it is no matter how little you think it is fifty dollars hundred dollars keep it aside every month and pay it consistently until you have been able to pay off 
the credit card debt okay now i'm just gonna go up here to entertainment now before i go to entertainment i want to quickly go up to my total are you guys ready i want to unveil how much my total cost is so far can you see 2900 let me see if there's anything that i have missed and then perhaps the let me see if there's anything i've missed okay yes there's something that is not on this list and that would be laundry so i see that there's no laundry in my list and i'm going to try to infuse it somewhere okay and for laundry we do 50 canadian every month for laundry okay and um, most of the time we're able to keep up with the 50 but let's assume that it eventually goes up to 100 okay and you know sorry let's assume it eventually goes up to 60 but usually we budget 50 50 canadian for laundry every month now you see my list is still about 2954 now um i could still do like because okay we pay for netflix we pay for so let me just put netflix here in entertainment first i have netflix and i pay from canada and i pay like 22 canadian for for the plan that i want okay so i pay like 22 canadian for netflix and i think like four dollars for prime right and um but that's it okay so let me just make it 26 and that would also be like four dollar for prime okay so i have subscription right it's one thing to prepare your budget guys it's another thing to follow it religiously religiously now everything i have on this list are pretty much the basic very basic things that every family needs when they come into canada they are basic they are pretty basic right but this is not all that we do but just because we can afford a bit of extra then we add all we do other things to just improve the quality of the life altogether right so if you can then you can do that that is where you begin to spend without guilt because you know that you have you have an airtight budget that you work with you have your savings and investments taken away and then you still have extra for spending so you spend without guilt at that point for people who have kids out of everything that i have here right the let's let's approximate to three thousand because now it's two thousand nine hundred and something out of all this let's just say that for people who have kids add a thousand five hundred extra to this budget you will be at say four thousand five hundred now i also want you to imagine that your rent is not as cheap as mine because now <laughs> what rent rental properties in canada is over the roof if your rent is not exactly as mine let us add 500 extra to that budget right so it's going to be three thousand plus a thousand five hundred for children plus five hundred extra for rental everything comes to five thousand canadian one i'm just trying to say really and to show you that even with a minimum wage job there is a certain lifestyle that can accommodate it and you will be very fine with your family okay oh, probably you don't get a car yes oh imagine that you do not even get a car thanks for reminding me babe because it's not look at look at our car bill here guys it's not even a must that you get a car you know or you finance a car there are people who i need to get to the transportation part of this again because it's huge right look at our transportation cost transportation alone is like fuel plus insurance plus the um plus the financing of the vehicle it's almost everything here is almost 800 canadian now imagine that you came into canada and you bought off your first car you don't you didn't need to finance it's more than, eight, it's more than eight, well let, okay even if it's a thousand i think it's about 900 right it's something. it's something so you guys if you come into canada and you buy off a car you if you buy off your vehicle you are you are removing about one thousand dollars from everything i have even said that's cost saving so for those who are not financing you would have removed this 414 canadian 
you will probably be paying only the 267 for insurance and it might be low for you as well depending on how many years of experience you had from nigeria right and then your phone will just be 150 and then there are people who just are not even buying a car at all although I, if you have kids it's going to be really difficult but then if you decide not to get a vehicle at all you have taken out this entire transportation cost and then you'll probably replace it with bus and taxi fare which would then be very minimal because imagine that you're both walking downtown and it's easy access why are you getting a car anyway you know what i mean so at least for the first few months or two you feel like you have the money to do that yes and then you can get your the monthly pass is like hundred dollars right yeah you can get your monthly bus pass yeah you can you can imagine that guys so this is one cost that is completely avoidable okay guys so that is the size of my sharing today i have to stop at this point and i hope you've been able to pick a thing or two when it comes to budgeting i tried to be as transparent as possible if you have any questions at all if you have any questions please put it in the comment section i'm here to answer all your questions if there's anything i said that was a bit confusing just let me know i'm going to reiterate i'm going to um clarify in the comment section okay thank you so much guys for being here thank you for supporting me thank you for subscribing for those who have i'm going to see you in the next one i'm not done with this conversation i mean we are one year in canada right so i'm taking all the time to talk about all my experiences in canada and i'm not just talking about this as a story i'm really trying to bring out lessons from my experiences so far there's still a whole lot to talk about you know about jobs about businesses and you know everything living in canada so i'll catch you guys in the next video okay bye